Have you ever dreamt of becoming the hardest, the best, the fastest, the strongest? A force so nearly invincible that both good and evil would have no other choice than to bend to your will? To be able to change and shape the world not only for the best but also to your liking. This courier has, in fact, he's dreaming of it right now. And you see, for some reason, the courier's idea of achieving all that is to adopt a pet. So, can you eat Fallout New Vegas using only ROAR? And now, ladies and gentlemen, pets and plants, I present to you Ash's dumb cousin, whose magnificent stats include 10 in endurance, charisma and luck, 7 in agility and 1 in everything else. As for his skills, they're mostly medicine, sneak and survival. And the two traits that most define him are early bird and good natured. Which is ironic, because the first thing I do is to take a handful of steam packs from Michi Boy without even asking. And here's our wonderful good girl! Oh, she's such a cutie! By the way, the mod for this allows you to force recruit a companion and I'll put it in the description. So, Roar, are you ready to head out on adventure? Oh, she seems so eager! Alright, so the first thing we do is to undeliver every single mail from every single mailbox in the town. And as luck would have it, we immediately get a locksmith's magazine. Upon exploring the schoolhouse, and as Roar is having mantis for breakfast, I find a safe. But I cannot lockpick it, so I read a magazine to teach me how to do it. And uh, that's weird. Oh, I should be able to... Oh, that's right, I forgot to wear my lockpicking hat. There we go. We get some goodies, sell everything we don't need to chat, and I'm worrying about Roar. Won't she miss her kin when she's adventuring out with me? Cause it's going to be a while and I can't take any risks, so... Maybe we should visit some of her friends. We'll see how it goes and how she feels. Also, it's not like she can talk. Hey, dude. Holy shit, no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Upon reaching the Yangtze Memorial, the brain-injured courier fortunately stopped hallucinating. I get some more steam packs from the abandoned shack and eventually... Rich Hold Sloan. On. There are death claws all over the damn place north of here. I'd turn back if I were you. Um, you there's one bag, right here. And I'm gonna do the butterfree tests and see what she does, buddy. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Damn! That was a young one, too. Oh, she's ruthless. Maybe she's just not into being around kids that aren't hers, if she has any. Level 2 comes around and medicine seems to be the best stat for this run. Especially when you consider that I'll have to heal Roar manually. You see, she won't regain health from me sleeping and uh... If there's no Roar, then there's no run. Cause obviously I cannot fight back, not in this one. <laughs> and she sure seems to hate Deathclaws. Maybe she only likes the alpha males? Uh, apparently not. Oh hey, I found the fat man! Maybe we can sell it later. Okay, yeah, I get it. She just wants to relax with another Deathclaw mother. Maybe drink a glass of blood as they send boomer memes to each other on their face claws. Sheesh. Okay, that little bit of hatred wants the whole quarry for herself. <laughs> Even the babies hope for things. Ah, anyways, we got some eggs, I found a mini nuke and an omelette later. I've decided to go through the hardest part of the map in the early game just to see how strong she really is. But just as we were about to leave the quarry through the other side, we meet some great cons. Which immediately reminds me that we've seen that bit of clothing before. And well, call me salty, but... Roar! You scratch! And what? I never said I couldn't attack anyone to aggro them. Plus, it ain't my fault if I tickle someone and Roar gets all protective of me. And on our way out we fought pretty much as many Deathclaws as we did in the quarry. Which is just yet another reason for why the path north of Good Springs is a really bad idea to use to get to the strip. After that fight I get to level 4 and right after we encounter some vipers in a ghost town. We take swift care of them, and that's when a huge family of Brahmin decided to try and get Deathclaw for dinner. And funny enough, this took a bit. But it's it's Brahmin, so Roar took care of them. It's just those sheer numbers, man. 
In fact, one of them even knocked me back. But by the end of it, it was me and Roar that had a feast. I then passed through the Great Khan's camp to give me the map marker and went right into a couple fiend bosses that I knew I would find. The first one being Violet and her pack of trained dogs, and the second one was Mr. Golf himself, Driver Nefi. I grabbed that stupid golf club and told him that that wasn't a sport fit for this era in the Mojave. Well, one could argue that if Mr. House had a body, maybe, but no. So we keep going and I reach the gun runners, where I sell everything I don't need and make sure I have enough caps for that credit check. In Freeside, I helped a hungry kid that could not catch a giant rat if his life depended on it. But this time, the brat didn't thank me. What? He always does. Although, he was very polite to Roar. Anyways, in the next area, two thugs tried to ambush me, but Roar said no. Level 6 came around and Old Ben did his little spiel. You know, it's the one that triggers an unfortunate soul to meet his fate by hand of Securitrons not wanting poor people in their Martha's vineyards. Credit check submitted, and we go into the strip. I ignore Victor, play some blackjack in Gamora, and get some drinks in the Ultralux, cause... It's time to get into the tops, baby! And when we do, I immediately bitch slap Betty, so Roar can get him and his bodyguards and give them all the last hugs they're ever going to get. I grab the platinum chip, get the Mark of Kaiser from Vulpes, and when level 8 comes around, I get to put medicine to 100. On my way to Cottonwood Cove, I had to go through the traditional route since I didn't have any of the locations on my map yet. In Nipton, I discovered that even though Vulpes left to hand me the Mark of Kaiser, he hadn't returned, either yet or forever. So if you know, well, tell me. In Searchlight, Aster warns me about the town being irradiated to high hell. But when you're hoarding cams and got a living dinosaur guarding your back, you don't worry about such things. Then, Anders tells me how Kaiser took his cosplaying a bit too seriously and begs for mercy. Well, he asked for help, but we either mercy him or we leave him be. And I did try punching him to see if Roar would do it, but she won't. And that's when I remember that I still have... The Fat Man! Oh, even Roar looks puzzled with my rationale, but I ignore her and bestow a mini nuke upon Anders. Sleep well, buddy. In the cove, I present the Mark of Kaiser to the Legion Explorer and meet. When will we be free? Mrs. Weathers. I pickpocket the gate guy and hand her the key, which turns the whole camp against me. I uh, didn't think this one through. I just wanted to hear the line. When will we be free? Oh, when will we be free? It's it's the way she says it. It's a bit funny. Trust me, I know the situation isn't, but they're just NPCs. Oh, and Aurelius gets a big kiss on the forehead from Roar, and then Lucullus isn't bothered in the least. Okay, I'm just hoping that this whole situation is the something that the Legion in the fort will tolerate as well. And, uh, they, they do. Good. The main gate guy then quits his job just to become my mini nuke launcher's babysitter. And we go on to meet the most important bald guy in the whole west coast. He returns the platinum chip to me as he wants me to destroy everything we can find in the fort's bunker. And on our way there, I'm going to go and meet someone that I wanted to help in the last run. So I'll do it on this one. Melody! Oh, that's right, I don't even need the speech, just low intelligence. Oh, that's a lovely detail. She wants her teddy bear back, the one that Anthony took for his trained dogs to play with. And when confronted, he then decides that the best idea is to put me in an arena with his dogs. Not just that, but his best dogs. The thing is, I can't use the weapon he gave me. Not for progressing things, that's my rule. So either Roar comes with, or I'll have to reload and not help Melody. Fortunately, Roar did come in. And so we get Sergeant Teddy, and you know what's better than one? Two Sergeant Teddy! Sergeant Teddy! Oh well. In the monitoring station, Mr. House then asks us to upgrade his army of Securitrons for him, 
and going in... <sighs> Roar's not really coming with. She's stuck in the hallway. Meanwhile, a Protectron's shooting at me. And I'm just thinking, what am I supposed to do? Cause this is just fun, we're gonna have plenty of turrets and Protectrons. So obviously, I start running like crazy and melting my Stimpak supply. Just to keep me breathing. I do manage to upgrade the Securitrons and dip. The Baldi then asks me to take care of Mr. House, and I give him my good word on it. And lo and behold, we become accepted by the Legion, and not long after, a disguised Frumentarius tells me the location of a hidden cache. The one that the Legion gives to the ones that aid them, it's just by Sniper's Nest, but it only shows up after the Frumentarius, so don't bother looking it up without triggering that NPC. Also, the loot is a whole lot of money. Nice, even if it is just Legion currency, but that's okay. I then make my way to Sloan, where I profusely apologize to Snuffles for what I did on the previous run. Oh, he's such a cutie. I then leave, just in case Roar gets jealous and starts yet another massacre. We pass through Hidden Valley and go near Black Mountain, just so I can feed Roar and watch some, if not my favorite creatures, in the whole franchise. Centaurs. And Roar takes care of Mo so quickly that I couldn't even see it. And as she's having lunch, I go into the crater, just so I can start glowing in the dark. And as a side effect, I also took the Brotherhood's mission holotape from the two poor souls that did came this way. Going back to the Hidden Valley and Roar uses some bark scorpions as toothpicks. And that gets me to level 10. We then make our way into the Brotherhood's bunker and make use of the holotape that contains the bunker's password. And then I go through nearly as many job interviews as we have to endure in every company that has dumb and incompetent corporate recruiters. Seriously, if you need more than two, that better be imposed, because otherwise you're just incompetent. Anyways, and eventually we're gifted by Elder McNamara an exploding necklace. He demands I go and investigate what an NCR ranger is doing so close. So we do. I then punch him in the face so Roar can take care of him and go back. And this triggers one of the most stupid conversations the game has. How did you resolve the situation with the ranger? Violence. Did you just make matters worse? I sure hope so. This man That's put right. an exploding collar on my neck and thought I'd become a brotherhood asset. <laughs> oh, he must be a brilliant and misunderstood genius. Cause who else is going to decide to not only do that, but to free me from it and allow me to freely move in their bunker from now on. And I mean, it is a good mechanic for the game, it's just not the wisest thing ever. And oh, this experience was so traumatic that the courier then starts running like crazy until we see a boomer. Although it's one that's not part of the boomers. Me and George then make that that I'll be able to reach the boomers that aren't really comprised of boomers for 300 caps. So of course that I accept it. And then, <laughs> of course that I kill him and take an extra 400 rather than just the 300 he'd give me. This way I won't have to remember to come back. And then the dummies shower me with artillery shells and then invite me to meet their leader. Mother Pearl then rants on how eager they've been awaiting someone to come up and make contact. That's not sarcasm. And I'm thinking that having met my fair share of sociopaths, I'm good. So I just go through her dialogue and dip. And yeah, we got a favor to grant to our favorite dictator, so I use the platinum chip and get into the Lucky 38's control room. I take Mr. House out of his cyborg cocoon, his pissed, and I tell him Kaiser says hi. Slavery! The future of mankind! Uh, no, why would I side with the Legion on this one? Robert, think. Don't let the anger get to you. Although I did tell him he's going to die, but he just asks me. Not to disable him, even though he's doomed? But I'm set in my way, so I try punching him, but Roar doesn't even want to get close. And I mean, I get it, he probably stinks after that long without a shower. The thing is, 
the option to disable him is not showing up either. And I can't use weapons to progress. And sure, sure, I used a mini nuke on Anders, but that was for a joke. This is for a quest. So, bare hands it'll have to be. I fist Mr. House, and as we're leaving, a security turn says the darndest thing. Engaging target. <laughs> no, you're not. Shut up. Upon leaving, an NCR trooper gives me a message from Ambassador Crocker, but I have no plans of going over there. Billy Knight then starts telling some jokes. It's hard to sleep in this place, I tell you. Last night some girl was pounding on my door all night. Finally I had to let her out. What? I bitch slap him, but I don't think he's into physical humor. Sure, later. Back in the tops and I go and meet... Yes, man. Tell him that Mr. House is out of the picture and that he should go and make himself at home. With Yes Man in charge of the Lucky 38, he then shows me the demonstration that Mr. House had planned for the Securitrons. And right after, I tell him that the Mojave tribes can be ignored. And in return, he asks me to install the override chip in the Eldorado substation. Stay out of the control room and enclosure, or there's gonna be trouble, got it? An empty threat later, and since no one's in Scythe, no one really cares that I went in and installed the chip. What a bunch of disorganized dummies these quote-unquote guards are. Level 11 came around and I decided to go back to Good Springs to stock up on steam packs. Cause there's one massive thing I'd like Roar to do before we go into the second battle of Hoover Dam. And that is to see if Roar can take care of the whole promontory by herself. So yeah, who'd win? Dozens of Deathclaws or Roar? I then found out that Cottonwood Cove still hates me, so I let Roar take care of the one dude that apparently survived. We crossed the river... well, uh, no. I crossed the river. Roar didn't. Awkward. Luckily, and as I've seen before, she did end up teleporting to me. It was just out of nowhere. So I start going into the promontory, draw the attention of the first four death claws, and one by one, they all get one shot. In the promontory itself, five death claws then come up to us. I try and keep my distance, and the same thing happened. But look at Roar's health. Yeah. That's why I bought the steam packs, since I have to heal her one by one. We then pass through another four death claws, and this is where the challenge begins. Well, maybe. The number of death claws here change, and there's no way to predict how many alphas or mothers we're going to find. Another five come along, and Roar decides to head on in against who knows how many. One alpha then comes right by me, and thankfully, it ignores me. It goes straight to Roar, they start going at it, and as I predicted, Roar wins. And then another one comes by itself, but that's a one-shot, and I think that's it. So if I'm not mistaken, that was... 20 death claws? <laughs> that's lucky. Cause this place can have more than 30, and that's including mothers and alphas. And we didn't even find a mother. But that's fine by me, so I go on to grab the Remnant's power armor, but it's not there. And that's a common bug. There should be two bodies, but they can despawn or just be weird. Either way, the fix is to go back to Good Springs or wherever else, wait a bit, come back, and they should be there. So if you encounter this and don't know what to do, now you do. And as such, I then grab the eggs so we can throw them at Yes Man and he tells me that the Legion has started to move towards Hoover Dam. And as such, it's time for us to do what Joshua Graham couldn't and take Hoover Dam, in this case, for ourselves. Rar has to become the one and only ruler of the Mojave and be crowned the queen that we all know her to be. And as for me, I'll just be using the binoculars and narrating the rest of this beauty. And yeah, let me be real. I never doubted it would be easy, but goddamn, it's been fun a lot more than I anticipated.
Anyways, two great cons go down, a howitzer explodes and Kenturians start coming our way. Roar then beats the living crap out of them and when I'm in a 3 to one handicap fight, where I cannot fight, I cannot see her anywhere. So our last then gets scolded and reminded to act right, unless she wants to just go back to her stupid boring cave and she doesn't. And I know that because she immediately runs towards the last group of Kenturians on the west side of the dam. On the officers, the only thing we really got to worry about are two NCR dudes in power armor. I go and greet them, but they give me a warning, and that's when I realize that Roar's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> or the Securitron for that matter. And tracing back, worrying I shall, since Roar can't seem to get past the first door. Level 12 decides to become a thing only now, even though I haven't gotten in a fight in the offices at all. Okay, then I have the brightest idea of punching metal to drag those two idiots to my path deathclaw. You know, rather than going past them myself and having to deal with them. And good thing I did, because Roar then gets so angry for them to have the audacity to not let me punch them or move past them that she gets out of that room and annihilates all their hopes and dreams. One overriding chip into a consolator and yes man then tells me where I can activate our new army of Securitrons. And sure, I'd rather have an army of Deathclaws but eh, I'll take what I can get and between having them or destroying him, ah, it will take the same time. <laughs> and let's be honest, we got here, so it's not really gonna make a difference. Anyways, the army's activated, and to the east side of the dam we go. Where once again we'll find groups of Kenturians trying to pet that dog. Except, they do it with their bullets, so... Roar shows them how she'd like them to do it. And unfortunately for them, oh, she can't really seem to control her strength. Poor thing, no wonder we're her only friends. Also, here's when things got silly. I meet the second group of Kenturians and uh, she's in fuckwaresville. Again, I tried plenty of shenanigans to try and get her to come close, but she simply won't. And by the time I remember that I can just run and that she'll spawn alongside me in the Legate's camp, ah, the Securitrons have all been defeated. I guess my brain cells were too busy to remember to heal. But once I have all my brain power active and focused, we're able to run until the Legate's camp. Everything is smooth. Some guy tries to show me his power fist, so Roar shows him her talon. And in the camp itself, we take care of everyone except the beef. And I mean, I know she's well fed, but. Come on, it had to be the Securitron to actually take care of the Brahmin? Oh, I guess the dumb thing was just dumbfounded on how chill they were. And the Steampack meditation session later, and it's time to go and meet the Terror of the East, Lanius. I make sure to piss him off as quickly as I can, and guess what? Even Lanius goes down in one hit. Oh! Roars just that ridiculous. Which means that it's now time to go and get our mandatory seminar on nearly all the swear words of the English language, as Professor Lee Oliver is about to arrive. Anyways, obviously and quite predictably, the cigar is a lie, so I provoke him as well. And then both Roar and the Securitrons try and see who can get the most skills. They try to go half these and they both succeed. And can you beat Fallout New Vegas using only Roar? And of course you can! Who'd even think of such a dumb question? Oh, right. Uh, anyways, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Steve Whittle and to John Walker for their support of the channel. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, I hope I'll see you on the next one, and I hope you have a good one. Bye. And I, I guess I'll see you around.
We accomplished a lot together. It was fun. Take care.